YouTube. So this is not the LTD Phoenix that I had a couple of weeks ago that I fitted a Floyd Rose FRX to. It's owned by the same person, but he obviously quite understandably really likes these guitars. So this one is a nice and easy says Phoenix 200 on the fretboard. So it's nice and easy to know which one it is. Um, L11, 2011? Really? Is that old? Don't look it. Yeah, so what we have is a Firebird, which I didn't actually notice, didn't really think about it. Phoenix, Bird Rising from the Ashes, Firebird, good idea. Um, so LTD, reverse headstock, basically it's a Firebird. It's, it does have this, I was talking about this step thing that the uh, Thunderbird bass, oh, I could really give it a wipe. Um, so it's got this wider chunk in the centre. This might, I think it might be a through neck. I'm not really sure, but you can sort of see where the, the pink, the paints sank in a little bit. So it's, it's got like a strip down the centre and then this strip. So that was where the original Firebirds and Thunderbirds, um, they were through neck. Uh, so th this one might be, at the very least, it's a set neck. Kind of, it's, it's got that sort of um, through necky type heel though. You know, there's no steps, nice and smooth. Um, ESP, or LTD, well, ESP. Uh, the fretwork, as and always, they've got some different sort of fretmaking machine. I kind of decided that about the ESPs, or the, the LTDs, because they're so unbelievably round in the end, edges. Every LTD, I always say this whenever I play an LTD, they're always the same. Um, my baby metal guitar, this one, the one I did a couple of weeks ago, they just they're really good at doing frets, like the best frets, like you know, as good as frets can be. Um, not circle frets, but uh, but really well put in. Um, this has got oh that actually being being pernickety as I am, this one has a gold EMG on it. This is a silver EMG. I think it's an eighty one eighty five set. I can't remember. I basically got this in because the knobs were sitting too high, so it didn't really have anything to fix. Um, yeah, I also said to the the owner's up here. Yeah, see the, the way the switch goes up and down. Would you not rather it went back and forwards? And he's up here. Aye, can you turn it around? It's up here. Yeah, no bother. I spent half an hour trying to work out some way of fitting the 9 volt battery in there and having the switch like that and it just cannot be done. You cannot put a 9 volt battery in this cavity unless you've got this switch going up and down, you know, so that the, the actual, the gubbins of the switch is sitting horizontally. That gives you enough room just to put a battery in it. Um, battery was dead in this by the way absolutely dead so it wasn't working when I got it um, this one instead of having two volumes I'm pretty sure this one is a volume and a tone and it's got an afterburner switch um, which is like an EMG basically it's like a 10 decibel boost or something like that I have fitted one before I fitted one to my pal Alan's um, oh god is this an EMG it was a Flying V was it a Jackson is that a Jackson or an LTD one of the two uh, and his one had a like a push pull pop with a volume control on it so you could set the volume control to you know two and it would give you a two decibel boost or something you know what i mean or if you set the volume to 10 when you pulled it on it give you a 10 decibel boost not those numbers but you know what i mean this one's just on it does have a trim pot on the back of it uh like on the but you can't access it from the front so it's basically just a massive boost uh which will make a big difference in clean, but probably not so much in distortion. So I'm now, when I'm sitting here, I'm still using this. I actually took the card to the studio last night and I didn't go on with it. It sounded very different. I'm kind of up at volume. It still still sounds the same, which is really weird because I'm used to being in the studio having like the, the wee lady of the soft tech, where once you've got it cranked up, it, you've got so much more, so much control of going, and it's clean and and it's fuzz, fuzz death. So I can kind of do both things. Whereas this is kind of it's clean, and if you play it louder, it's just louder, which is something that is probably an awful lot more useful if you're for a lot of people. But for me, it's like kind of having a three piece. So it's like, well, three piece and a singer. So don't count a singer as a musician. Um, or a drummer as a musician, uh, but you know what I mean. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of wondering what the EMG, I, I, I've had actives, 
Oh, to be fair, the actives I didn't like that I had were single coils. I've had a, I've, I've never owned guitars, so I've got EMGs and I've, I've had a few through. But I mean, really, how clean can it go when you've got... Definitely a tone control. Now, I think see that level of clean that you can get out of um, EMGs, which you can't, you can't really get. I, I, I can see the point. I think does Dave Gilmore not use um, like a active pickups? The only idea with active pickup is you can get it um, louder without it distorting. But on the flip side, if you're using it. For like for heavy gain, hard gain, because it's so clean to start with, you can get much more out the pedal, and it doesn't lose its definition. Doesn't just turn to mush the way quite a lot of the guitars I've got, like the sort of the Dimaggio Super Distortion type thing. If you stick them into like a a really driven thing, it's it, it's kind of it just turns into mush. Whereas this will will stay much cleaner with much more heaviness. You know, thinking Metallica, thrash, modern bands. Yeah, Metallica are a modern band to me. Yeah. Uh, what, the 1986 or something, the first album? No, 1983, because my, my Capri was from 1983 and it had a Metallica tape from 1983 in it, like a single, I think that's the first one. Uh, but modern, wee bit, wee bit of neck heaviness on them, I would have said modern a bit better. So a wee bit neck heavy, but it's not it's not bad, it's not like a Thunderbird bass. Um, so neck... Try hitting the afterburner, which I think is going to be whopping louder. I'm going to assume it works. I've never even, I've got a battery, I've never tried it. It's a lot louder. Still clean though. Turn that off. favorite thing with this guitar is it's um oh it, do, it does the clean thing right so you could play pretty much in any band with this but although it's it's ltd so it's a metal guitar it's not too much i don't think this would look out of place in any kind of band really um you know put a, make it satin black and then put a black scratch put on it maybe it would be too metal it does have the mgs i mean but i i kind of like it's it's vibe you know i, I can see i could so you played this in almost anything. Rap pedal. Chugs. Sounds like a lift to me.
Afterburner. Ah, see, that does it um, exactly what I thought. See, the Afterburner, how it was like pure double in the volume on clean. And when you've got tons of gain on, it just fattens it, thickens it a little bit, as opposed to being like, hey, volume control, whoop! You know, it's like... I think there might be something to do. See what I'm saying now about the... It chugs. I don't, I don't mean that in a derogatory term at all. But like um, that whole being able to kind of... I think part of the part of the way guitars do that is the shape, like the physical shape of the guitar. Because your arm's kind of coming in from the back on the top, it's really good for palm muting this shape, just the way where your arm sits on the body to get it. That I'm actually going to turn it up. I'll use my even more distortion thing, my plus pedal, twin note. I was actually talking to him but I see the the one the, the the Viper I had which is kind of like a melted SG was a Viper 50 so normally the number is the lowest the lower the number the cheaper the guitar sort of thing you see there's lots of Ibanez do it as well you know like a or Yamaha do it you know like a 112 is much cheaper than a 312 sort of thing um this is a, a 200 but I'm not sure the numbering system's quite like that on these because this is like been through neck and quite high spec Unless the, unless the cheapest one's a 10, in which case maybe it does work that way, but I don't think so. Um, I think the, the, the numbers aren't maybe quite as rigid as it would be easy to think. What was that rough again? Slow, but that one. Thinking, see, there's a. I always try to challenge myself and not get stuck in a rut about um, opinions and things. I'm always willing to change my opinion, given more information. I think going on to try and being a tube snob forever, trying the solid state thing, the EMGs seem to work an awful lot better with that than they do with not necessarily a tube amp, but my tube amps, as in the soft tech. And the Laney, and the reason I bought the Laney is because it sounded like the Softec. So those two amps are very similar, structurally, sound-wise, harmonic-wise, frequency-wise, and all that. Whereas other tube amps maybe are not, but that those two, and um, they don't tend to really gain anything from active pickups. Whereas the clean thing, really, that does just just to do with um once you start cranking a valve amp, it starts. You don't get the clean all the way to the top, sort of thing. So I'm actually thinking, as I said, I don't have a guitar with active pickups. Um, I do actually have a set of active pickups. They're not EMGs. They're um, what are they from? They're from a. I mean, actually, yeah, was that? It can't be. It was a, it was a, a Fender, a Squire, Jazzmaster. Why am I thinking a Jazzmaster looks like this? Yeah. Me. They're not not million miles away. The, the Jazzmaster that came out, or no Jazzmaster Jaguar, Jazzmaster, whatever one. 
it was a sort of metal one because the, the guy who bought it wanted a hardtail one didn't like the jag trem so he got like a hardtail one which was basically it's kind of like this with the active pickups and the similar sort of metal but still a bit got a bit of the 50s hot rods car looky thing going on um, kind of like that so I've got a set of those pickups which I'm thinking of actually putting in a new guitar which I picked up yesterday um, which would have been today's video but seeing as I was out in the car yesterday for the video two days ago yeah I bought two uh, uh, I didn't two days ago I was out in the car yesterday I put the video up but yesterday before I, before I put the video up I was out in the car getting another one so I figured if I put a, a, a normal video in the middle I'll do that Thursday or Friday or something um, and I'll show you my two new guitars one of them's that one there which you can't you can't really see it's blindness just now but um needs sorted out um yeah so i'm a fan i mean i think maybe the i should, I should maybe have a guitar with active pickup just to give it a proper go you know like especially even if i do end up selling it at least if, I, if i've got it and it's mine i can keep it for you know a month or something or two months or six months and then if i decide i don't like it later but I actually give it a proper go you never really when you, especially when i've got a shot of a guitar when it's not mine you know when i've just been fixing it there's ones that you know I can I can judge that I really like it, but I can't really get to know it because it's, it's not mine. You know, it's like it's someone else's wife. You know, um, which is always fun for a short amount of time. That sounds really bad, doesn't it? It's just so clean and jangly. I just go for playing something acoustic. -y. Wow, that tone control is effective, isn't it? I was just saying, it's just a little bit sharp. Really effective. I have to imagine talk for 20 minutes again. It was only meant to be 10 minutes. Um, yeah, so of the low LTD, keep calling them ESP, which I suppose I could because they're made by ESP. It says ESP on the, the volute on the back. Volute, good. Um, I just, this is the best looking one, I think. Um, all the other ones kind of look, it's just a taste. I'm, I'm talking, not talking about um, like physical playability or anything. I'm just talking about just pure looking at it hanging on the wall. Uh, the SPs tend, uh, the LTDs tend to look a bit like there's like the, the Les Paul ones kind of a bit pointy, and it's like they do they do a flying V? Well, I've got the, the baby metal one, which is a sort of offset V, it's just a bit, and then there's the, the SG, which they're the Viper, which it's kind of like a melted, it's just, just like aesthetically not, but it's this. It's, I mean, I, is it down to the fact that I don't really know Firebirds? So maybe that's the problem with the, the SG because I'm used to looking at the SG on the wall. It's like, that's an SG. So if you get one, it's just a bit different. It looks wrong. For, and the same with a Strat. It's not quite the right shape. Or a Les Paul. It's not quite the right shape. You're kind of, because I'm used to looking at it, it looks odd. Whereas this, I'm not really used to look. I mean, I see it's got a wee, um, actually that's, uh, you there? It's got a, um, it's always handy. I keep picking this guitar up. It's got the, it's, it's, that, it's, see, it's got it here as well. That slight, um, <clears throat> slight hook thing going on, which is an Ibanez thing. At least it's Japanese, but this, this is, uh, this is made in China. But um, that that hole, it's not not round. It's got like a, it's a wee, wee bit of a wee bit of a beep, beep, there. Yeah. So, rocking guitars. I would definitely, I would, I would definitely have one of these. They're great if it was 80s and Japanese, of course, so it fits down with the collection. But um, I can see why Ian likes these. Um, it's excellent. It's, bit, maybe it's, it's, it's feeling very familiar to me just now, but I think that is maybe because of that one I had a couple of weeks ago with the FRX. So that, that was the initial playing it going, yeah, it's pretty good. And this is me going back two weeks later and going, Oh yeah, okay. Uh, and consistency is pretty damn good because it feels exactly the same as the other one apart from I put a Floyd Rose on it. Um, keeping the same colour. So I can totally see why I put the the FRX on the other one. So you can have, it does something different. Although this one's active and the other one's pa passive, I think. It's got, it's like, I've got a bare, bare knuckle in it or something like that. 
Um, but I'm digging it. I'm digging it. So, rock on. I'll do. It. I'm going to be about to do another video um, um, of my two new guitars. Catch you there.